Okay, my name is Tom MacArthur. I joined the U.S. Navy and I was assigned to the USS Kimberly, a destroyer which participated in the Battle of Okinawa. I was born in a little railroad town in Kentucky, about 30 miles outside of Cincinnati on the Ohio River. Uh, like I said, there was when I was born in 27, about three or four years later, my father was out of work, but you know, we must have moved six or seven times. As, as we said during those years, we, we moved every time the rent came due. And uh, that, was, that was pretty much true. But uh, I, I went to work at 11 years old. I worked on an ice cream truck. Oh, God, like a dollar a day, something like that. It was, it was on Saturday and Sundays, you'd be at some ballpark or on the ice cream truck, one of the two working. We didn't live in one place long enough to really make a lot of friendships until 19, the late 1940, when my father finally got a steady job in Cincinnati, we moved out of Kentucky into Cincinnati, and uh, I went to grade school there and a couple of years of high school. And uh, we, we just the usual, we had gangs, we snuck cigarettes, we even tried chewing tobacco and that sort of thing. And, and it was just a, a fun time of life for several years. Call. It was a Monday morning when President Roosevelt made that famous infamy speech that that day would live in infamy and the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor. And of course, we, we didn't know much about world affairs at that time and you wonder where is Pearl Harbor and, and of course you gradually learned and I was 17 years old at the time. And I, Dropped out of school and joined the Navy. Took my basic training at Great Lakes, Illinois. And after 10 weeks of basic training, I boarded a troop train in Cincinnati, Ohio, destined for Treasure Island, California, where I was assigned to USS Kimberly from boot camp. Well, a destroyer is, is a pretty fast ship. You can go about 35 knots, which would be close to 40 mile an hour. We were to protect the troop ships, the aircraft carriers, and all the related ships. And we were on the perimeter, and they were called tin cans because of the uh, thickness of the hull, I understand, was uh, pretty vulnerable, but it was not like the battleships. And so. So they were named tin cans, and I guess for many reasons they were they were fast and smaller ships. I was a seaman first class, and I was assigned as an ammunition handler under what they call a five-inch gun, gun number four. And my job was to load these 65-pound shells into a hoist that then were hoisted up to the breech of the gun and fired. Uh, there was about four of us at that time as ammunition handlers. There was nothing but ammunition stacked all around. These five inch shells were uh, in, on pallets and you could grab them one at a time and put them in this hoist of the breech. And it was very crowded, but it was a very efficient and fast operation. It was just a blast of, of course, we couldn't see the, the fire or the recoil of the guns because we were below decks, but the noise was horrendous. And in fact, probably some of the hearing problems that most of us have today were, that was the original cause, I would think. And I boarded that ship on March the 15th. At that time, the invasion of Okinawa was planned to be the last battle of the Pacific, and it was better than 1,300 ships that were programmed to participate in the Battle of Okinawa, which we were one of. I boarded a ship on March 15th of 1944, and we arrived at Okinawa on 
March 26th. The United States Navy's famous Task Force 58 heads for action. Barely a month after Iwo Jima, British and American carriers and capital ships close in on the Ryukyu Islands, stepping stones to Japan and the China coast. And three destroyers hit by kamikaze planes on March 26, which is Palm Sunday. And we were one of the three. They call it kamikaze, meaning the divine tempest. We call them suicide planes, manned by pilots wearing the ceremonial red sash of the kamikaze corps. They specialize in one-way trips. Their destination, the deck or hull of any American ship under which plane, bombs, burning gasoline, and red sashed pilot can crash. There was two Japanese planes were attacking our ship. One was shot out of the sky, and the other successfully landed on the ship, and, and explosions and fire resulted. The ship rocked, and there was smoke and fire, and and of course, the rest of the guns will continue blasting all the way. But you immediately went above deck, you thought maybe the ship was sinking. And you, you really, you didn't realize what was happening. You, know? you were so young, you just did what you were told. But when I, when I got above deck, so it, was, it was just fire and devastation every place. And you, Everybody was manning fire hoses and body parts were all over the place and we just horsed overboard to, to try to clean up and then you immediately were sent back to your guns positions in case other planes came and guns three, four, and five were on the rear. This plane hit them to gun number four and that took out 40 millimeter guns and the seven that were killed outright were manning a 40 millimeter gun. The other 18 that missing were just blown to pieces into the water. And of course, when you're missing at sea, you're not coming back. And, but it was, it was a memory that just stays in your mind, but it, it, it doesn't bother you. You realize how fortunate you were and you say, well, what am I a young kid doing here? Why? Why am I here, you know? And now you realize when you look back that you did something to help your country. I feel, I think about it many times. I think about those shipmates whom I barely knew who were deceased. Uh, they were the heroes. None of us were heroes, the ones that didn't come back. They're the ones that were the heroes. We were ordered to Pearl Harbor and eventually back to the States, San Francisco, for repairs. I can remember leaving Okinawa, and here we were, a crippled ship, all by ourselves. And it was pretty scary. I thought, well, you're going out to the open seas, and you have no other protection. The only part of the ship that has firepower is on the forward part. I can recall the Navy had sent a PBY Catalina airplane out to look for surface vessels and also submarines. And that airplane followed us to the point of no return where he had to return to base or run out of gas. I can recall him flipping his wings one way when he got ready to turn around and go back as if to say, good luck and goodbye. We arrived in Pearl Harbor without incident. And from there, after minor repairs, we went into San Francisco for about 30 days for re major repairs. And, they, and then we were instructed to join Admiral Halsey's third fleet in the South Pacific, which we did. 
On August the 6th, President Harry Truman made probably the most important decision that was ever made. Eleven days later, with no answer from the Japanese, the Americans drop atom bombs on Hiroshima and then Nagasaki. Well, the attack did occur, and on early September, the Emperor of Japan uh, was asking for peace. So we, along with the USS Missouri and a couple other cruisers and battleships, were ordered to Tokyo Bay for the signing of this peace. The USS Missouri was selected because that was President Truman's home state for the uh, treaty to be signed, the unconditional surrender to be signed. We stood by in Tokyo Bay and we were not very close to the Missouri, but with binoculars we could see the, uh, the uh, occurrences going on. The war is over. Peace is here. We were ready to party. It was great, you knew, you knew the war was over. And this was something that, of course, the people on that ship that had been there since the beginning of 1943 were absolutely elated. That, you know, it was time to go home. This was going to be a time of celebration. And you realize what an honor it was to bring the Missouri back after that unconditional surrender had been signed. Being patriotic is, is, is one of my favorite things. I, I guess I get, I get chills every time my flag goes up. Or, it's just a, a feeling of, of pride to know that you were part of it, you helped your country. What little bit I participated, it, it, it still was a, an asset to my life. We're proud to be an American. I'm proud to serve in the U.S. Navy greatest Navy in the world.